let's talk about the basic specs of this Geely E5. So the Galaxy E5, the second battery EV within the Geely Galaxy lineup. So based on the Geely electric architecture, from its sustainable experience architecture developed by Geely, of course, the vehicle is slated to be sold globally. So it's a global spec car, so different and all. So which is why you can get it in left-hand drive and right-hand drive cars with Proton helping out the engineering of the right-hand drive cars. And it will be sold here in the Proton e format. So on that point. So, okay, what's important is right-hand drive, left-hand drive, front, front motor, front engine, basically front motor, electric motor, front wheel drive, uh, single speed gearbox. Uh, it will be on sale in most markets as the E5 and EX5 in some markets and EMAS 7 in Malaysia. So it is basically developed to compete with the BYD Ato3 and all. So specifications and size is uh, plus minus but it's a bit larger. So okay power is about 218 PS or 180 kilowatts and over 300 over newton meters of torque there. Battery capacity options are 49.52 kilowatt per hour and 60.5 kilowatt per hour so uh, rated CLTC range of about 440 and 530 kilometers respectively so 0 to 100 is 6.9 seconds maximum speed of about 180 kilometers per hour so about decent right power efficiency is claimed to be 11.9 kilowatt per hour so depending on this one battery charging is about at normal uh, your normal house plug and all is 7 kilowatt per hour so it's going to take about over it's good for overnight charging and it's about the industry standards for something of this category here in malaysia which is basically the byd auto 3 yeah. So this is the Geely E5, uh, it's left hand drive here, right hand drive country, so first time trying out this front wheel drive car with about 200 and over horsepower, over 300 newton meters of torque, full EV, simple and all, big screen, uh, small, small, what you might call it? Small instrument cluster for me. Aircon seems to be nice. Let's get into a driving position first. Interestingly, this car is quite unique. Unfortunately, everything's in Chinese right now. I don't understand. This range is supposedly 384 kilometers. It's yeah. a display also? Yes. Turn on. Then I think you can on. see that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, driving mode here, this is your gear lever, yeah, these are your lights, let's get comfortable, and uh, the steering is, I have to put it in drive, then only everything, then only the power assistant comes on, right? Yes, but uh, for the same, if you want to change, you also can change, right? Oh yeah, yeah. that one is the... Angle. I'm talking about the waiting and all. So right now it's just firm, only, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so now okay, then everything lightens up. Yes. So you press P again. Mm. It waits for a while. I think that firms up. But anyway, we can drive mode. Okay, let's go. So everything is basically automatic in this car. So this is the Geely E5 front wheel drive EV. That supposedly it can do the zero to hundred in about uh, six six point nine seconds, something like that. Uh, range if this model I think is about 500 km CLTC this is the higher highest spec one so now we're gonna do the bank mid corner I'm not just not used to the car yet let's relax like, let's do about 80 90 okay uh, differences this will be launched in Malaysia as the Proton EMAS 7 EMAS 7 so now it's the GDE5, also called the EX5 in some, some countries. Uh, hmm, very nice, very quiet. Brakes seems progressive and nice. 
uh, lane departure warning I think that's on so 85 on the bank corner I'm no drama at all no push acceleration out of it it's good my driving position I feel comfortable in it top speed is about what's the top speed? 180 Plus minus hmm. Kind of like it, it's quiet, it's nice But there are some weak noise here definitely At certain at speeds higher than 110 The steering feels nice uh, What setting are we on? Are we on standard or? Right now if you are using sport and then you are on the comfort Oh comfort mode? Yeah, like that's right sport Okay, so right now it's sport mode Comfort spec car. I mean, the suspension. Of course, this is a problem with this Proton test track. Is that it's actually smooth, so you, I can't tell. Uh, weighting and balance seems to be nice. I I, I like the feel. Of this car. I find it quite interesting. Not much to say in terms of uh, layout and all. Uh, visibility is good. Everything seems to be clear and all. Uh, if this is the EMAS 7 which will be sold in Malaysia it's not really not too bad a product I think ok so after pushing the thing the battery seems to be holding at 365 and all few laps and all so uh, interesting 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 first drive of this car this could be an interesting uh, EV to be on sale in Malaysia if it's like whatever is given here, the specs, how it looks, how the car feels to me. I kind of like it. I think if, if you are in, in need of, of, a, of an EV, we'd say between 400 kilometers and 500 kilometer range there will be two specs uh, this is the highest spec one with 500 over kilometer range uh, it's kind of good no real complaints of course this is not real wheel driving first time inside the car and I'm kind of happy with, with its uh, drive, driving characteristics and also I'm not really I don't have any final Final uh, judgments or whatever as usual, but it's nice. It's nice. It looks good on the outside, and I feel that this could be quite a good start for Proton. Proton's uh, first foray into full EV, battery EV cars on sale. So we do not know how much difference this will be to the to the. This e E5 compared to the EMA 7 So all I know is uh, From what I've heard uh, The EMA 7 could even have faster charging Capabilities compared to this This one if you're talking about uh, The normal Charging from our wall plugs and all Is going to be only about 7 kilowatt per hour Whereas uh, We are so used to hearing like even cars Going up to 22 kilowatts And also 11 for even like Other brands from China sold here So Proton most likely will put in a faster charger than what is given here. Here is about 7 kilowatt power charger for its uh, battery size. There are two battery sizes and all. So on that point, maybe that could be better. You know, in terms of suspension and all, I don't know what Proton going to give us. Aside from the conversion from from uh, left to right hand drive. Other than that, I'm. It's an okay drive, it's simple to drive, getting in and out, it's not a real problem. Uh, thank you for this first drive and I, I kind of like it. It's a bit softly sprung a bit, but I do not know how soft or what because this is not real-world driving. But it's a nice first opportunity and first drive. So that's about it.
interestingly, these are the cars that were taken on that trip from the Geely E5 World Tour, uh, which started in China. They covered over 3,700 kilometers already. And these are the same cars that we get to try out here in this test session. So the GDE 5 is going to be the ones that sold most globally. The Proton EMA 7 will be the Malaysian batched Proton version of the same car. But from what I can tell, drives well in this form already. I like how it handles and all. Uh, about 100, 140 kilometers per hour on the straight and all, which I was doing. Uh, feels nice. Corners well. Seems to be okay about 100, 110 like that on this bank corner session. But of course, this is not a real world test. So, that being said, the only thing uh, which I would say this car is like, the range of it is... Uh, it's not a WLTP uh, given range, which I heard that Proton will be testing out, giving us a more real world uh, estimate and all. So if you're talking about the uh, CLTC range, uh, Geely gives it about about 400 and 500 km, 400 plus and 500 plus kilometers, depending on the battery capacity or model. So uh, knock off. 25% or 20% thereabouts for real world, almost real world mileage on WLTP, then that is something we have to think about. So basically we look at 380 and maybe 470 kilometers uh, range from these electric cars, EVs. So what you get, a lot of tech, a lot of sound system, a lot of screen. Uh, you can tell there are no physical buttons on the layout except for like a bit on of the air conditioning actually the main ones are there like fan auto recirculating for the aircon and then everything else can be you can be you can run through the volume now instead of just clicking anything and you can have basic layout basic functions and all of what you want the thing to display like now it's on aircon you can just scroll it through there instead of like this one so i think it's important that as driver steering wheel controls are there Smart controls are there. You can use it to work the whole system. system. And unique sound system, Fly Me Sound, all Dolby Stereo and all. This two-tone dashboard, I think, will not be offered in Malaysia. From what I saw, the EMAS variant on testing, which is fully tinted, has a black interior. So, nice and all. So, this has a fully... Very nice and airy cabin. Steering material feels nice. The leather. The trim use also is interesting and nice. A lot of cubby holes, a lot of space underneath the the center console. Also, you can use it for a lot of stuff. You have your glove box. You have your cubby holes. You will also find under seat storage. And then the Fly Me sound system is uh, speakers here. Speakers on the on the dri driver side headrest, driver side only, mirror, standard, usual trimmings and all. Uh, 12 speakers in this car, so, oh there are 12 speakers, speakers on the top and all, so it's like fully set up for, for family actually. So in terms of what I'd say this car is, it's a good first family EV to have. Not sure about how much you're gonna price it, but if you're talking about specs like this, the battery size, the range, and all, and uh, whatever they're gonna give you, I'd say that this is a good start for Proton to try out into the EV. Of course, price price is important. Let's see how how Proton prices this car, because by in terms of what they're giving out, what it's specced up right now, and what Geely has given in this car in fact for not only for the Malaysian market everything is based on the price if it's sold like say in Australia or Thailand and all Thailand will be the AX5 Australia could be the uh, it, it is the E5 in most markets will be the E5 EX5 Malaysia will be the EMAS it will be all price sensitive and it is a good entry into the world of battery powered EVs so because it has a lot of safety features uh, 
a lot of uh, tech has been put into it a lot of development have been, has been thrown into it and also these cars were the ones that did the over 3000 km drive from China to Malaysia we're continuing the, this one Malaysia we handed over to the EMAS for about 2000 over km worth more worth of uh, real world testing here on normal roads so it's going to be quite interesting for Proton and for GE at the matter this one and for this E5 